6.30 p.m. Um, we do have a few members that are going to be um, one missing and then several that are going to be late. So what? I make a motion that we uh, open the meeting. I'll second that motion, although you don't have to motion to open it. I understand that. So, um, thankfully, Deb um, Tata has done a wonderful job giving us a lot of documentation uh, from that was requested from our first meeting. So I want to start with uh, agenda item number one, which is review and approval of the meeting minutes from April 26, 2017. So I'll give all the committee members a few minutes to look at the minutes. There are a couple email exchanges with myself and Deb, um, Steve and Deb, and I think both of us. So I think you'll see a couple of things related to some clarifications that were asked for specifically. And then we'll have a discussion about approving um, minutes going forward. So these are the draft minutes for review. Well, I'd like to comment on 1C. I believe that I nominated Mr. Desjardins uh, in order to be the chairperson, not Mr. Holman. I think Mr. Holman second. Yes, that is correct. So 1C is you're asking for a revision for you to nominate. And I seconded it, but second doesn't matter, just nomination. Yeah, there's no second in here, it's just the nomination. So we'll make that revision to 1C. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion by committee members about that request? Question on number five. Number five. Um, at, at the top of page two, um, you said that um, we're here to evaluate the act and the town manager's job description. And I believe we decided after that discussion that we're not looking at the job description, just at the act. That is correct. Correct Amundo. I think uh, there was a discussion and maybe I got caught in the meeting minutes related to the fact that that was provided to us by the selectman. Um, selectman Fleming, when he opened us, had given us the copy of that. But Steve, as you point out, your committee is the uh, already addressing that. And like I said, our focus is not to look at the job description. So we'll remove that from the uh, minutes. Is there any specific words you want out just to remove job description? You good with that? I'm just trying to see what the finished product looks like, so I'll wait till the chairman is done. So you read the, read the changes. So the change would be Al Holman stress his understanding that they are here to evaluate the act and that no decision should be made on actions of the previous town manager. So I've taken and removed the words and town manager's job description. Your packet. <laughs> you so you I'll do a comment, but I'll wait. Until we vote on the minutes? Or? Yeah, well, can, do you want to change that after each one? Or do you want to do them? I'd like to do all, all the edits quickly through, and then we'll go back through and go through each one of them. Okay. Thank you. Just for the two of you just walked in, we're already in session and going. Oh, sorry. And we're on, so we're we're on at TV. The meeting minutes changes to the meeting minutes. So at this point, we have two. Um, any other items? Um, on page two of the document, under mission statement, paragraph A. First sentence, it goes on to identify uh, second line Upton Town Managers Act so as to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of town government and citizen engagement. I'm not quite sure why and citizen engagement should be in the mission statement. So this, uh, just from a discussion standpoint, was the mission statement that was drafted and brought to the committee. This was something that was given to us. Does it mean we have to accept it? No, no, this is, we modified the 
This yeah. is the one we modified. We'll, we'll get into it a little bit later. There's a, there's a modified mission statement. Right. So that's I just capturing what was brought. It it's also it's is in the team. modified mission statement. It's citizen that, that engagement. In, it's a citizen if, engagement. If I had asked to the question that we just leave that alone as it's in the meeting minutes and address that in the agenda item number three. When we get to agenda item three, we'll talk about that because we're going to pick up okay. where we left off from the edited section. So right now we're just talking about the, any other any, any other modifications other to, the minutes. to the minutes. Changes to the minutes. And you'll see a couple emails from myself and Steve to Deb about a couple items that we made sure were captured and, and, and put in for the draft that was put together. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as modified. Second. And second moved and seconded. So I got a motion made and seconded to accept the meeting minutes as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Yes. Thank you, Deb, for making sure you look at that. Two emails. One email was from Steve. He had a comment related to, oh. um, again, the uh, previous actions and the job, job description, which we already talked about. And my email was related to making sure that we had the complete um, town manager assessment act documentation, which is, we'll go into this a little bit. We have that in our package. Right. So. Thank you. So, the, like I said, those were the, the those meeting minutes or those emails were related to those two topics from Steve and myself to that. <clears throat> okay. So we're on agenda item number two: review and discussion on citizens' petition for more articles passed over at annual town meeting. So, in our package, we have those documents. I don't think they're, they're a little bit underneath. Hmm. There's a petition, which is a petition right here. Here it is. Final draft of the man petition to generate. <laughs> no, that's the final draft. Yeah, it's down a little bit in your package. Yeah. It's got a recovery letter on it. Yep, there's two of them. Are they still stapled together, Deb? Dear Upton. This is the right. first. Dear Upton Board of Selectmen, is that one of them? Yeah, them? this is one of them. So one of them is this right here. The second one is this right, one. Right, this one right here. With the revised language. Petition for the annual town meeting, which as well as Which is this side, right? These, this, this one. So you're looking for these two in your package. This one. This one. <coughs> Can you ask a question? Yes, sir. Why do we need to discuss the petitions? Because um, I believe the petitioners and writing forward is the reason this committee, one of the key reasons this committee was formed. Um, I think it's relevant. I just want to make sure that as a committee, um, you know, when we get put together a, as a group, I think we're in, some, in many regards a diverse group that's a makeup of the citizens. I want to make sure that we look at what was petitioned and asked for and make sure that we look at it in our charge as we make the final charge tonight. So, like I said, I think I expect that we're going to have some good discussion as a committee about that. With the petition? Uh, yeah, just like I said, I just want to have a discussion to make sure that our charge addresses things that were brought up in the petition. I think we've talked about a few of them.
So the petition itself is on the back of any of the signature pages. So Steve, to your point, from a discussion standpoint of the committee, um, oh, here it is. there's essentially five paragraphs in that. I think the first paragraph, everybody would agree, is just a statement. The second paragraph is really the only thing I think that the committee should have a discussion about with regard to what they were asking specifically to be looked at, which was, and I'll read it out loud for the committee to make sure we're all talking about the same thing, and it was, Second paragraph started with, and also to establish from a list of voting Upton residents and non-voting members for a special commission to serve as specialists to consult and guide on issues of compensation, law, professional representation of public interest and best practices, and any other special skills as may need arise. So as chair, I think this is the only paragraph that has any validity to what we as a committee should have a discussion about to make sure that our charge um, addresses these items. And uh, Steve, I'll, I'll start the discussion and uh, hand it off to the rest of the committee into the point where I think the compensation, I don't think we want to have any piece or part of because I think that the, between what's being done with the current selection process, I don't think that is really a purview to what we're trying to look at. I think the only thing that really applies is law, professional representation of public interest and best practices which we'll talk about a little later in later agenda items where we're talking about, you know, looking at, looking at our, our act and making sure that it addresses items. So I don't know what the committee's thoughts are on that approach. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, does the personnel board set the compensation of town employees? No, not, not the um, uh, town manager. But other town employees? Uh, we, we evaluate. Um, so you make a recommendation? Right, we you do make, make a recommendation. Make a recommendation. Yes. And you also evaluate the, the uh, uh, scale or the grade they're in? Yes. They, so they, yes. Set the, they set the grade they, and they evaluate yeah. the position on whether supervisory or whatever which right. dictates the grade. And then that puts them in a certain salary range. So, is is it your in, interpretation that including compensation here was meant to apply to the compensation of a town manager or to town employees in general? I think it uh, my, my my was I think it was related to the town manager. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I to answer your question from a discussion standpoint, I would agree that we have a five-year compensation review that occurs every five years. Five years, yep. We have a professional um, search firm and a consultant right. who understands the marketplace right. and the appropriateness of salary already being addressed with your committee, the uh, screening committee and working with the selectmen in the, next, in the selection of, of the next town manager. So I think I'm really comfortable talking to the committee about it. I don't think we need to even touch this. That's, yeah, no, I don't think we should. No. Board of Selectmen are the ones that negotiate. Right. We don't negotiate, they, we right. don't negotiate exactly. at all. The Board of Selectmen, because right. they're the hiring authority, they negotiate the Correct. salaries. So. I will make a statement that I think, you know, that there's been a lot of concern about, you know, do we, do we have to pay the kind of money for that position? And I know that doing some of my own homework and research, I realized that the second we called the person a town manager versus a town administrator, there was an actual cost to that. There was an right. expense there. We could have gave that person the same exact job description and everything and call them a town administrator and we probably would have paid 10 or 20 thousand dollars less in the marketplace and i i see debbie and Morelli down at the other table shaking her head i mean that it's, it goes in one of these things from a standpoint of well that's just i mean that's that's old news though that's old news that's old news so i think you know a lot of people need to understand and hear that and i think that's a matter of discussion about it but i i don't think if, if the committee doesn't have a problem i would like to move off of Compensation go to the next two because I think that's really the need of what we're talking about. And I think the fourth item is just a catch up. And when you refer to law, what what was the concept on that? Um, I think that's really what we're talking about. Really, the town, the manager, town manager Act. The town itself. manager act is, is law. 
because it went through the legislature. Correct. The town chose to use the special acts process, which is um, one of three ways we could have addressed the structure and, and the arrangement of our government. Um, I've included a little more information in in later discussions that I think there's there's a lot of things you can talk about related to law, but essentially the, the act is law, basically. So the act itself is, is a law. And it's actually one thing I have learned in doing a little research prior, prior to this meeting is that the act is actually a charter. It's a piece of a charter. Right. So our government currently has got a little piece of a charter and then the balance of our town government is made up of the general laws and bylaw process, which is another mass general law structure that's allowed for town governments of a community of our size that uses an open town meeting board select and town manager structure. So I think I think the work we'll, we'll end up doing in looking at the act addresses law. And I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts about that. I know there's several people at the table with with law law training and experience and they can correct me or So I think that, that what we're doing with the acts addresses law, per se. Any further for discussion on that point? I think the uh, third item is really the, yeah, the part of the right. yes, back a little bit, please. Yes, sir. Yes. I think the third item, professional representation of public interest and best practices, is really what this committee needs to do on behalf of the town and the selectmen to do a good job of doing a, a, a thorough review. I think that's that's kind of the heart of the matter of um, you know how our acts are structured, how our current town government is structured, and how our first six plus years with a town manager, seven plus years with a town manager, um, do we have it right in our framework and our structure and the way things were put together. So I think. Um, I actually look for some thoughts from the committee about that particular item because I think that's really the, the crux of our charge. And I think there's there's going to be several things we need to talk about as a group to make sure that we're looking at it objectively and being willing to be open to to input and feedback from um, a couple groups of stakeholders. The three groups of stakeholders I think that are very relevant in this process are, are can be broken into three three key groups. The first and most important stakeholders are the board of selectmen. Because essentially the town manager is essentially their agent, their professional manager and agent. Everything the town manager does is essentially their, through their authority. So I think that group is one of the first groups we need to engage as a committee in a structured way to get their feedback and input on the good, the bad, and the ugly of things that work well, didn't work well, could be better. I know I'm watching nearly every selectman's meeting since uh, fall. I've seen a few of the selectmen comment about certain things that they wish were different. So I think we want to kind of understand what those are. And best practices, as you see in the packet, I didn't expect everybody to uh, get involved in the uh, in looking at the packet, the packet's more of a kind of resource and a, and a piece of homework for the committee. Um, but the packet is a collection of communities that have done just what we're trying to accomplish. So the case studies from Mass Municipal Association and some other reference resources. And I'm open to, as a committee, open to anybody bringing anything else forward. But uh, in doing a little research, this is the stuff that I come up with that I think will help guide us. So. The only thing I would caution that we discussed at the last meeting was the input that we received from the stakeholders, the selectmen, the department heads, um, not to tailor this charge towards a particular person. Mm -hmm. um, and that we, it's more of a guideline for whoever gets the job is we run the committees who are fully capable of evaluating and recruiting um, the next town manager and working with the selectmen. Um, but that we don't take all the criticisms that we will probably hear and try and correct them all over document. I would I would suggest that now you said the first stakeholders board is like when who are the other two? I think the second one is town employees as a whole. 
and it, it, I, I would put boards and committees in that group. I would just say everybody that's not a selectman is the next group of key stakeholders. And I think putting them in as a group, there should be a discussion whether we should break out department heads, the key department heads. Because we don't really have, every our structure doesn't define that that specifically. Um, and the third group is citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, my, to that point, I think we have, we obviously need to talk to the selectmen um, and get their input. And I think we have an obligation to talk to the direct reports, those department heads, as Scott suggested. I think at that, at beyond that point, if we get, if we bring too many other people in for discussion or input, what will happen is we'll mask the issues that we're really supposed to be talking about, because then we're going to get into personnel issues, personality issues and that kind of stuff. And I think, I think if we allow ourselves to get mud, muddy down in the mud with that kind of stuff, we're going to miss the purpose of the commission. Well, for all intents and purposes, we are the citizens. Right. Correct. So, so I, mean, I really, I, I, I agree with the co-chairman as far as, you know, the people who they're working with. We have an obligation. It's very important we talk to all the department heads to make sure that the functionality and the reporting structure and the processes are working. And if not, what, what processes or functionality are not working? And what, if any, things we need to do recommend that we fix that. Just my phone. Your phone? No, just my phone. Oh, okay, good. Then it won't work now. Um, but beyond that, if we get, our purpose here is to evaluate, not evaluate the person or the personalities, but to evaluate the job of the law and make any recommendations, if there are any, to, to modification to that. Um, but beyond that, if we get too money down, because what happens is, having had experience, as Alan has and uh, other people who have been on the board, what can happen is you get muddied up in personalities and people mm -hmm. saying things that aren't. aren't I would agree with that completely, and I think other the only face-to-face -face folks that I think we should be talking to are the selectmen, and at their pleasure after we have a description of, or discussion of how we've engaged department heads, and I would probably add certain boards and committees into that. I think that at least people who represent those boards and committees do some serious heavy lifting throughout this town are still going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting. I think they need to be in that group too. Only those, only the, only the people that are under the auspices of the town manager. For example, the board of health of the board of trustees, library trustees, don't report through or engage through the board of selectmen or the town manager. So to get input from the board of health, for example, would be meaningless because we have no, we really have no. I'd actually probably have the selectmen tell us who we should listen to in boards and committees. I, I would agree with that. And so, Chairman, are you saying that you don't think that we need to hear from the citizens, that we're enough of a representation? Um, well, two things. I think let's, let's stay in the description of two items. I think first things first, I think we want to talk more about town employees. There's ways to survey employees. I know my, my company that we survey the entire firm Mm -hmm. once if not twice a year mm -hmm. in a blind survey process so the senior leadership and the management teams understand how well they're doing and what's what's cooking and what's boiling under the surface right so to your point i would agree i wouldn't i you got to be careful how that's done um, but i think there's ways to do that in this day and age and actually very proactive governments and companies will do that i think there is I too think there's a way to do it so yeah i think i look for people from the uh some ideas how to do that. I know that you can do. Uh, there are online surveys that you can right. ask yep. employees to yeah. do, There's, which make it yeah. very There's easy. And then the only ways. the people that do it do it. Right. So you, can, you can attach it to an email that's related yeah. to a person, but you can never see who that is. Yeah. Right. The, the problem with doing anonymous surveys is you will get yes. very bad information. Yes, I agree with that. I think to the committee's point, if we're going to do that, I think you have to be very thoughtful in how you craft it. And you have to set up questions and you have to have an agree, disagree kind of scale. You need to kind of there is a, re yes. remove, there's a process it, to remove all that. There to, is, to there's see. definitely a way to remove all of that. So I would ask that the committee put their hats on and thinking of doing that, because I think that'll be important to do. Well, I, 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 in my opinion is before we waste or spend any time doing that, we should, get the opinion of the Board of Selectmen 
because uh, it was my understanding that this committee was supposed to represent citizens yes. and that we don't need to go out and do that's the object of the committee okay. as we represent the citizens. So then the third thing is the citizens. And I agree, we are essentially the people representing the citizens. Right. And we have various, and everybody in this in this group has a various different participation in town government right. and, or just straight citizens. And the way that we get feedback from employees, I think, is through department heads of those departments mm -hmm. that the town manager currently is responsible for overseeing. The direct reports to the board, uh, to the town manager. The, right. direct reports. the department heads. The department heads. the department heads can, if they choose to, ask members of their department, I have a meeting with this committee, what do you want me you to tell take them? Take to the committee. Okay. So one of the interesting things I'll bring up, and I think it's a point that has struck me quite a bit as we talk about the structure of committees, is you brought up a point, 31 boards and committees last meeting. The selectmen only have liaisons to six currently published. Mm -hmm. Are we just let the other people wander around town? Or? So I think there's some disconnects I think that need to be addressed. So I think... Um, but that's not a town manager issue. That's a board of it, selectmen. It's actually interesting in the sense that there's a, there's a, there's a, we'll get into the meat of it in the, as we did start digging in the town manager act. But there's, there's a statement that it's a catch-all for the town manager to catch all that stuff. That's not being addressed by the board of selectmen directly. Right. I know I served on a committee for four years. And I served at the pleasure of the selectmen and never talked to the selectmen once. Or maybe talked to them once or twice. I, but, I but dealt again, with my department head and the town manager. But that's, so, that's not an issue that is germane to what this committee is supposed to address. Uh, that may be an issue that's germane to the board of selectmen. And if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, that's a whole different. That's a separate thing. That's a separate thing. Our job is to evaluate the board. Oh, so, so, yes, please. People. So, uh, so what you're saying is that you were doing work for the board of selectmen, yet you didn't have any interaction with the selectmen. However, you were doing it um, for the town manager. Well, what, what most most boards and committees get appointed, and they right. actually serve at the pleasure of the selectmen. And did, you, did right. you have interaction with the town manager? Um, I did. Okay, so yeah. that is the reason why we need to open up the scope of at least the um, the employees and the boards, not just the ones that report to the town uh, the selectmen, because of examples like that. But if the selectmen choose to not interact with the committee, Red light here. that's their choice. Correct, but, but we're looking to, our focus is, is the town manager act, not, not the, the not select, the board of selectmen. Right. not the board of selectmen, right. right. So if we have, we want to engage the people who were working with the town manager, not just those who chose to engage with the board of selectmen. We want all of the grouping groups that were engaged with the, t the uh, town manager so that we can do our job right. So I'm, I've served on many committees, some of which the town manager also served on mm -hmm. as a member of the committee, mm -hmm. um, and some of which the selectmen appoint and Go away, do your job, and tell right. us when you're done. Right. And I don't see how, how any of that has any bearing on the town manager act. So there, there's, a, there's a statement in the town manager's act where he talks about they have a job responsibility in the act. I'm not sure how it all reflects in the job description. Uh, well, that can actually, pretty much the but it pretty much says that, you know, you may have be responsible for dealing with one committee or 10 or 12 or 15, it, it basically is a very generic push to assign some responsibility. The way the act's written, of course, it's written kind of broadly because the act is law. The job description and the way we put the framework of government together is you can explain how we do that. Right, as, but a, as a community. again, the, the town manager serves at the pleasure of the board of selectmen. If the board of selectmen Aren't pleasured. want, <laughs> want <laughs> I can't sit next to you next to <laughs> If the Board of Selectmen want the town manager to be involved in any committee, then it's up to them to direct the town manager to do that. 
So, so I, I'm not going to go too far in this discussion because that's why I pulled together a lot of the documentation. We're not. We're really. We, we don't want to be involved in in uh, talking about the job of the board of selectmen. Our charge is the right. is correct. the town manager and totally, the town manager. Totally, totally correct. And but in the interest of getting information. That's a different story. That, that's a different story. I, I like the idea of a survey, but I like the idea of sending it to the employees. Specific employees. Mm -hmm. Name. And as far as the citizenry are concerned. I say employees, not specific. No, I, I think I, I, to having dealt with several ad hoc surveys, the data you get from a, a, a anonymous. Uh, anonymous surveys are largely bogus yeah. but if you be well that's my point my point can we just say here's a survey, survey you put your name on it give us the information you choose to give us the information if you choose not to do it you know that's fine your name on we it. don't force people to then, put their name on it then um, you had your opportunity right so that's my, that's my thing with the citizenry is each meeting as, as we were at the last meeting that we had the citizens are more than welcome to sit in here and we give them an opportunity sure. to make their point. That's why I'm, I'm hesitant to go after the citizenry as we are supposed to represent them. And if there's anybody out there that doesn't feel as though they're being represented, they have an opportunity to come to a post meeting and let their voice be heard. Um, where a lot of the employees may not even live in town. Um, it, and it's very clear on, on the job description and the law that the board, the uh, town manager's responsibility is all those committees and commissions that are re report to the board of select. Yeah. Period. That's 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 the charge. So I think it's imperative that we talk to the selectmen. Uh, Agree. Uh, I think what uh, Mr. Think Holman's trying to say is exactly when you open up, who's going to be able to make comment before this committee officially? Um, I don't know that it's necessary. It really isn't. I mean, anybody from the citizens can come and speak to us personally if they want. But Al is on point. It's really about who reports to the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen have the authority to uh, appoint this person. They're the hiring authority. Right. So, so one of the things I want to stop at a point, because I think we're getting, we're getting down into the, into the weeds specifically, but it's been a good discussion, is um, you know, I, I, I kind of almost want to essentially look at, because when you start digging into some of the models that are being put out there, there's some of the same dialogue going on by charter commission, charter review committees doing the same thing, where they are doing a much better job of establishing a framework. So our current town government structure in the sense that we have a very strong single point manager running town, having the authority of the board of selectmen, and it's sort of a, it's sort of a carte blanche approach. Mm. We can hire somebody for a three or six or three or five year contract. They'd run the town this way. You can turn around and hire somebody different. They can run the town completely differently. So I guess the question will be, two at this at only the for four, only forty five days. Is it, part of the law is that the board of selectmen can't can take issue with the, the town manager at 45 then within 45 days the town manager has to challenge that bing 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 and right. after that so, they, so let's talk they have 45 days you know, at the end of the day those provisions are things that will only get invoked when we need to get but I mean, my point have, is, is we know that the day-to-day -day day operations won't be but i would rather have a discussion more about with the committee as we look at some of the models of what some of the discussion points are being done from others about what should be considered. I know that when looking at the Groton one that's mentioned in here, and you can look at it, there's a lot more thought in how their community was making sure that their board of selectmen and their committees had a much more structured process and a framework mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of how they interact and what the expectation is. Because the names and the faces are going to continue to change over the years. And to your point, I think it was a great discussion from the first committee meeting, is we don't want to have to deal with it on a personality level. You want to deal with it on a structural level. Right. So, so uh, as a result, my what, suggestion. What I'd be interested to hear is from the Board of Selectmen first and from 
all the department heads that report directly to the Board of Selectmen, what, if any, structural changes in the Town Manager's Act would you like to see? Or recommend. Exactly. That's what I would like to hear. Bingo. Yep. I think that would, that boils it down to a very, very specific item, so it makes it easy. We collate all that stuff and then... Mr. Chairman, I, I'd ask that maybe we hear from this side of the table, because I've heard so much from my left. I'd like to hear what maybe to my right might say. Would you mind? Thank you so much. I just wanted to say, I think the committee was really pushed to become the committee because of the citizens. So to blanketly say we're not going to deal with the citizens, we represent the citizens, everyone's crazy, they're going to say mean things or however, we're, I think we need to first to just assess whether or not we, I know everyone's saying forget the citizens, but come in, sit in a meeting. I think we talked with Mr. Fleming about a workshop where the Board of Selectmen will be involved, the citizens would be allowed. I think we owe the citizens one workshop if we're not going to give them a survey or um, we really afford them an opportunity after every meeting or, or sit. I, I know we're representing the citizens, I understand that, but we got a lot of signatures, people want to be heard, they don't, the citizens tax dollars are paying the salary of this person, so let's get some citizen input. My understanding is that citizens can, I assume, you're the chairman, you're going to allow citizen comment at the end sure. of every meeting if somebody wants to make public comment. I know there were some on the committee that didn't feel that was appropriate to open it up. I hope that you'd always allow that discussion. Um, the open meeting laws, we're going, to, we're going to always do that at the end. We're going to offer uh, four or five minutes. We're going to keep the structure, but you're, essentially you're strongly encouraged to essentially let the citizens speak. So I only mentioned that because the citizens always have the opportunity to come here and to express their feelings about what's going on and what's important to them. The open meeting will allow those. No, no. The guidelines from the guidelines from the Attorney General Suggest give us a strong they, they actually suggest Suggesting. strongly that we actually receive input from the public. So thank you. That's a very good time. So is there a way that we could invite <laughs> you know I don't know publicize these meetings more and invite you know, trying to get the citizens to come to a meeting if we don't do a survey. I mean, we have Upton Daily. Yeah, you know, definitely. I, news, yes, whatever. definitely. I know, so publicizing I just, the next I meeting. I think it's is important. June right. 2nd, yeah. Whatever it is. If you want to come, you, you're right. At right. the end, if you have something to say, I and I think people will be respectful enough, you know, again, we're, we're looking at the larger workings of the town. We're trying to establish a framework. Not for, to next, not for the new person, but the next five, ten years. Let's have a framework in place that, that works, that you know, has the town future in, in mind. I think it's a good point. I think one of the things that I had picked up just the last day, I was traveling today in the airport, coming back from Washington, and I went in and somehow got on the town of Grafton's website. Well, as this fall, they have just reappointed their 10-year charter commission review, and interesting enough, they have a nice page for all the things that they're talking about and looking at it that lays out. Kelly McElrath has already mentioned to me that she's going to work on putting a page together for this committee like they do for all committees, not just because for this committee. But interesting enough, that, that Grafton page, which I'd recommend everybody in this committee to go look at when they, get, when, they, when they leave the meeting, it's got a survey, set of survey questions that anybody can take right there and then. So interesting enough, I think we're at a point where we're talking about differences of opinion, but I think there's been some good discussion. So we talked about a workshop, and then we talked about essentially some kind of survey method, but I, I, don't, think, I don't think as a committee that there's any consensus on what that would look like and how we would do that. I mean, the workshop's easy because it's less formal. It's not on cable TV. We have all volunteer to be on a committee. There, you know, people can watch us in local access channel, which is great. Um, but I think there's people you know, we all, we all know people that would never get up and speak in public. And I, I personally think some of those people may have some of the brightest and insightful ideas. And to put them on the spot because they're not strong enough to come and they're not comfortable enough to come and speak in a public format like that, I think is important. So I think we need to, we need to be somehow be approachable and inclusive <coughs> in some form or fashion. So the workshop's one of the few things that seems like it's an obvious idea. Do you have this? Uh, just regarding how we um, query the, the employees, we just have to make sure we're not picking and choosing 
who we, we query. So, you know, if we're if we're gonna do the department heads and not all employees, we you know, we have to just make sure that we're including everybody as a, a representation. It, it should be, in my opinion, it's the responsibility of the department head to collect input from and we should make sure that we tell yeah. them that. well, that's assuming citizen. you've got a, a, a productive cohesive that's communicative true. department that's, that's true and you may not have that so that's very true. you know or know. or a department head a leader who is going to listen right. to and bring, right. and bring the opinions of the people that work for them <laughs> right. i mean we that's can only problem, right? we can only assume that we have that yeah. well, well if we don't that's so, a different problem so I think two things are. I don't think I think you hit it on the, on the head, Steve. I think our charge is to make the assumption right. that the department right. heads are those kind of people. Right. Because if we say they're not, then somebody else didn't do what they're supposed to do. So I think it's safe to assume that the department heads are responsible enough to get those inputs. I think the board of selectmen, as you say, go to the board of selectmen and get recommendations on how to approach them, and what format. And I think that's the first, the, our first charge is to get, to go to the, go to those direct reports first. And if for some reason, if an employee feels that their manager isn't expressing what their concerns are, they can come here to a meeting and talk to us. Right. That's no different than if we open it up some night for them to come here. Plus they can talk to anybody or everybody in this committee privately if they're concerned about. Well, we need to make, we need to make there should be more clear ways for citizens to. So, so the graph you cite is an example. They have, they have some questions where you can just, if you're the only person that's only going to answer a few questions online, you just answer those questions and you're captured. Then they have an email address. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's multiple ways to, to receive inputs. Um, to your point, I think we do have to be very careful as a committee not to become the catch all of every right. complaint. Right. Right. But if if, um, if when Kelly sets up um, a, a web page for this committee, it can be very clear on that web page that the way to communicate concerns uh, to the committee is through you having your email address or the committee's Easy. email address. Uh, I was going to ask that they set up a town. We, well, already have email address. we already have that. We already have that. We already have that. Right. We just have that. So, it, it, you know, that email address should be put put on this web page, which I'm sure it will be, and then anyone can send whatever they want right. to that email address. So, so there's two things I'm going to bring up for the committee that I want to hear feedback from everybody on it. Is two things are, is, like you said, we're talking about some of the people that are really passionate about this community and are involved. I look at around the table and we're all the people that are involved, whether it's the town, schools, church, you, you name it, you know, where the people plugged in. We need to make sure that we're getting the people, we need to make sure we somehow create those people. So there's got to be some kind of outreach to, to bring forward people to, to, to make comments. And it is a point, it goes back to, uh, and the second thing I will go back to is it goes back that I know that the selectmen because I personally talked to two of them myself in the last few years, or three of them myself in the last few years, is there's not as much interest in town boards and committee participation. And I think we understand, you know, so that, that, that's an example of like, somehow, some way, we're not making connections. That I think that I wanna make sure this committee, when we look at the structure of the Town Manager Act, that, that somehow there's a capture of, of that piece of it. In what way? How, how do you want it to be captured? I'll give you an example. I actually talked to somebody who I was really talking to a lot, saying, hey, why don't you volunteer for this board or this committee? And they're like, it's a waste of my time. They don't listen. The committee process doesn't work well enough. So that was pretty, and I was disappointed, because I'm a person that will step up and serve on committees. And I'm like, boy, something's got to be done differently. But I don't want to get off, I don't want to get off topic. Well, I think the point is, is I think whatever we decide to ask as questions, I just want to make sure that there's some way that there's a there's a reach out, whether it's a local access cable channel, the town's website, emails. There's you can even do the only thing we can do is we can make it available. Right, right. right. And that's, that's, yeah. that's all you know, citizens do. have a responsibility, and their responsibility is to be aware of what's going on, mm -hmm. and if they don't take that responsibility 
then they can't complain about what goes on. They can. They can. They can. <laughs> they can Trust me, but, yeah. they will. <laughs> so we can we can do all the reach out, you know, the outreach in the world. It isn't going to change people from not wanting to participate but still wanting to complain a lot. Alan, how many times at a board of selectmen's meetings have we had a discussion on how to get more people involved in town government? Right. In the six years I served, and I served with Alan for five of those years, that was always a comment or discussion we had. I mean, you can post it on the web, you can put it in one of those publications like the Milford Daily News or or maybe the town crier. No, you want a publication people read. Read, right. And you, so you put it in, in that, and but people don't show up. And when they do show up, <coughs> having been through a couple open hearings on animal control or maybe a railroad hearing, mm -hmm. you don't get the stuff you want to, you, you don't get people with no emotion involved. So I really believe that if we focus on the department heads and give the, have our expectation that they're going to bring that to the table, those suggestions. And we make sure that they're not going to be held hostage or there's not going to be any reflection on their job description or their reviews, that they'll bring honest feedback to us. Well, that doesn't mean that we can't focus a lot of our attention on that and, and also do some community outreach. I agree that those are the people that we should be spending the most of our time on, but there should be some other ways for other people. And as we said, at the end of at every 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 meeting, at the end of the meeting, you have an open. And if people are that interested in it, they should show up. If not, you know, then life goes on. No, I agree. I don't think we need to. But the, the web page, if there is a web page, then anybody yeah. could respond with their feedback. And I know there's other ways. I know there's a few down departments like the police, for example, on social media, and they're very engaged with a lot of people in the community mm -hmm. through that tool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And But you got to do it right, you got to do it thoughtfully, because you don't right. want it to be out of right. control. Yeah. And, 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 being, and being someone who receives anonymous letters to the editor on a regular basis, <laughs> we have taken a policy that if you can't sign your name, it isn't worth repeating. And I think that's a position that we should take on any feedback. If you can't sign your name, it doesn't have validity. No doubt. That, that's, my, that's my opinion. I agree. You gotta put your name to it. Okay. In, in, in 2017, let's be honest, social media is the way it's done. So it's your name's on there for a lot of people. So that's one way. I'm just, I'm bringing up the other point. I think the committee's had enough discussion about it. I think I wanna hear some specifics from the committee about how we would do that with some ideas that we can bring forward to the selectmen. Because they're going to be looking for us as a committee to bring forward ideas that will be credible. I'm trying to understand the citizen input who isn't an employee because there are many town managers in this town, right? There's the fire chief, there's the police chief, there's the building inspector, um, and those all are appointed by the selectmen. And if the citizens feel those managers aren't responsive, they march into the selectmen's office and they talk to selectmen as the appointing authority and hopefully the selectmen are responsive to the community who elected them. Well, if not, then it's up to the citizens to remove those selectmen who are managers of this town. So just help me to understand, if a citizen is going to come in here and might say, my prior experience with that office is uh, the person or the position didn't give consequence to what I thought was important. Um, then you know what? Bring it up with the selectmen. I can understand an employee, but I, I don't want to get into personalities of the prior person, okay. and I, I don't understand. Somebody educate me. Why are we going to examine it with uh, citizens who maybe didn't have <coughs> good experience talking to that manager? We're going to do that to the police chief. We're going to do that to the fire chief. We're going to do that to the building inspector. No, not at all then why are we going to do it to this manager? That's all this, this is, is a managerial position. It's a high managerial position, it's the highest. but it's a managerial position. That's appointed by the selectmen. This, this position is the, the no. chief municipal officer for often. No question no. about it. There's only three other people that are hired than that person that's the board of selectmen. Yeah, that's true, Alan, but a citizen's petition almost derailed the entire process. So you have to give them something is what I'm saying. I think you need to show them some respect 
in, in that sense. Uh, I agree with you that we should focus most of our time on the department heads and, and potentially some, some employees, but yeah, but if they made it, a tremendous effort the, to the respect that do so. the citizens have been shown is the formation of this committee. Yes. And if people can't find the time or the inclination to attend one of these meetings, and I agree with that. then then no, they I agree lose. with that. I'm just I'm not saying we need to do a survey. I, I agree, I think a survey may may or may not work. But we do have to give them some form to This is the form. And this would be the forum. This is the primary forum. Right. Uh, and the form. E email access on a website is another form. Yeah, bingo. Um, right. So how my my concern is how far do we would, need to go? I wouldn't go beyond that. To get people involved. If I they don't want to really be involved, I agree. if they just want to complain, I, I don't have any sympathy for that. Uh, I wouldn't go beyond that either. Yeah. I agree. There's not a bunch of people that signed up to be honest with it. No. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, if, if really right. citizen engagement is what we're looking at, mm -hmm. it's all like the selectmen had a pool of 50 people and we were the chosen Correct. few. Correct. Um, I think like that's a enough attention. It, though. I mean, yeah, I'm just like, saying okay. some attention. So the interesting thing about it, we're talking about the dynamic attack. So when we brought in professional management, the idea is you're going to change the dynamic of how the town is professionally managed. So I know that any, I know that I go to town meetings and I really get frustrated when I see people jumping back and forth between town government and talking and making references to a professional company. All the things we just talked about that we don't have to do because the law gives them legal rights and stuff like that. If we were a professional company, we'd be filling out the chapter 11 paperwork in six months to a year because we wouldn't be doing a good job doing that. So I think when I look at the town manager and this, as we get further into some of the documentation we'll talk about in the next couple of agenda items, is you look at some communities that have really taken a different tack on how they're, how they're looking at things. So that's really the meat and potatoes of the best practices and professional interests or public interest part that we really need to think about. I think our discussion here is an example of like, I think we're, we're kind of going around in a circle of what, what we've been experiencing. I think there, I, I personally think in town government, um, I've been in the volunteer fire search for 32 years. There are certain departments that blow it off the charts and that is because they create the environment because you want to be part of the organization because they're successful, it's fun, it's engaging, they're very professional. The ones that provide the bare minimum approach, they die and wither away and get replaced with a, with a, a career organization. So our town government, I look at this more as a framework situation where you, I think one of the things that I picked up, and I'll, I'll state it right out of the box, is most communities that change their town government structure get a charter. So we did the special acts, which is one way to do it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's completely legal. And I think it becomes an issue of, um, when you look at those communities that did that, I think there was a lot more thought about how all pieces and parts of the government were going to operate. Just by so the way. We, we're, we've been talking, uh, I'll let you talk in one second. We're, we were talking about the town manager, the board selectmen, and four or five department heads. That's all we've talked about at this, this table right now. So I know that there's a lot more government in Upton that's essentially being left off. And I think what Debbie just brought up about the point is I think that's 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 part of the, the point. How do you make sure all the pieces and parts are working together and communicating well? We talked about that assumption that you know it's all all all's good. This isn't the first time we've gone out of the out of, we've made a change to the bylaws and changed to a job description and added a job in the history of the town. We did that sometime, some years back, uh, when we went with the uh, uh, financial manager, remember? That was back in the Gene Warren days, where they put together a commission, they decided they needed to have a, a town financial, what is CFO, CEO, CF, CF, Chief Financial Officer. And uh, so that's, that's, this has happened before, we've gone out of the bounds to do this, and we also did it with uh, a DPW director, some years back. So this is the first time we've done it. But, and a charter commission may be, may be the next step we need to take. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. But right now, our focus is on the Town Manager Act. And I would suggest that our next action should be to invite all three selectmen to our next meeting and ask them about the process 
of getting the department heads or the direct reports in here to talk to them. And we can probably do it in 15 minute increments or something like that and schedule them in. Is, but we need is there any value in reaching out to past selectmen? Seeing as one of the selectmen is like two. Yeah, three on the board. Doesn't even work with the time manager yet? <laughs> what, there's no value? You're, you have a valid point, a valid point. So I, mean, I, I think just there, two. Are, there are two people who work for the town manager in that aspect. So I, I would think that you have a valid valid point, Scott, that we, yeah. uh, that we probably, the two that, have, two that have the best input on it will be the two uh, selectmen that have worked with uh, the town manager. Actually, one of them has only worked with the current town manager for about a half a year. Right, so. Um, so, but that's okay. That person is gonna have a, a, good, a good input because they've worked with two different town managers. So they'll have exposure to do different, two different techniques and two different ways of doing business. So there's a benefit, benefit there to talking to that particular selection. I think it's important, but I think you're, it's a short window of people and time. We're not talking about a lot of experience. I think we'll get the most salient top three, top five. Then those things will stick out with this nine-person group asking questions. Um, I think, to be honest with you, when you look at best practices and models, one way to look to look forward is look at communities that are being put out through studies and MMA guidance as best practices. And the, the one report that we have that I put together in this package for people to have for a reference that talks about successes and failures. I think that there's nine communities and five were great successes and four were failures. And they actually outline how they were failures. And they outline failures of making changes also. So I think it, that'll be absolutely good reading material, a good input for us to go through. Correct. But I think that our next step, the next step in the process should be to get the selectmen in and have an open discussion with them on exactly what process they would prefer we use to get the department heads or the direct reports in. And if we should look at all direct reports or just a specific number, I mean, just special, I mean, to bring their input. And then once we determine that, give the, those department heads four or five questions that we give right. each all the same question. So there's a framework, and, correct? Yeah, a framework of yes. the questions. Right. And then give them a sixth, which allows them to throw anything else on the table they want, any other subject. So we know that there's a limited number of subject matter, a limited number of questions, and a limited number of responses, and then we can boil that all together. That's well, I think suggestion. to speak, the people coming here, those selectmen or past selectmen should be able to say whatever they want. I don't know they should be limited to some. Oh, no, the selectmen's a different story. Yeah. Okay. That's a different story. Everybody knows you can't limit a selectmen to a few words. You, you were asking about for the department, do you want to give them advanced questions? Right, absolutely. So they, so they, so they know. There should be no surprises. So there's no, no surprises. surprises. That's not the goal here. Educated. We want. And so they know what questions, what questions can be asked. They can go to their employees or their reports and get some sense of those those specific questions. Yeah. That makes it much easier, so there's no surprises. I know, for example, Fire EMS three or four years ago, we did a survey monkey, and it was very enlightening. And we actually got most, the majority of the department to participate in it. You couldn't see what it was, but it, it, it gave us a, a tremendous insight. So I, and I, there wasn't too much yeah, that, garbage. In yeah, that's a, diff, that's a kind of a different environment, because everybody but to your point, To your point, I would put it off to the side, because the only thing I can think of from the town employee standpoint, whether you're full-time, part-time, or a volunteer and boards and committees, is if we were going to do some kind of survey, then it would be it would be at a higher level. It would be at 10,000 feet. And it would be uh, a deep degree, agree, disagree kind of thing where you're trying to get... Well, I think we, we will have a couple ideas and thoughts about we're trying to get the pulse of what's going on here. Can you put together a five or ten question survey that can, can draw out I think we, what I the think, thoughts are? I think when we get the selectmen in, at our, if, we, if we can schedule that. And we should all think about four, one, one, five questions, that we, and then come to those, boil those down, those questions, to five questions that we agree on, and then we have a basis to measure each, each department to understand what their, the validity of their input. Um, I, and I also believe that any, any surveys or any information we get, and I'm, I'm really focused on this, not allow anonymous responses. If they don't have a name, it never even gets to the table. Yeah. I'm, I think as long as you guarantee people that the, the data would be kept anonymous too. 
which that would be fine too. So if it's not worth saying publicly, it's not worth saying. Well, meaning that it will be kept to this committee. Yeah. Well, it'd be on the committee. But once, once, once they send it in and it goes to this table, it's a matter of public record. Public record. So anybody so can ask. So we're going to get 12 surveys. Well, <laughs> but it's not a, an issue of surveys. Um, but it gives us it gives us honesty and and, and just like this meeting is being televised and recorded and we have been mistaken. Once it goes on this table, it's a matter of public record, and everybody has a right to see it. Absolutely. We don't have to share it. I mean, we don't have to sit and say so and so. -and -so no, no. Class. No, no. But if someone asks for the records, asks for the records it's, it's, it's a matter of public record. Yep. I, I don't think I said it. At this point, I, I'm not trying to open any of those cans of worms, but I don't think we need to go there. Yeah, I know. I, I think, think the bigger discussion is, is having a meeting with the selectmen at the next meeting is, is going to be important. Just. Uh, Point of interest as far as the um, town manager and the citizens, uh, as far as if it, interaction in the um, town manager act, one of the duties establish and maintain positive community relations with local organizations, groups, and residents. Yep. So, I think um, as we discussed, we definitely owe the owe the citizens a way to. Well, what do you suggest? Um, the, the ideas that we have already talked about, where we publicize these meetings a little um, more proactively, and that we have um, we use social media in some way to be able to um, allow those people who may not want to attend a meeting, may not, like um, the chairman said, may not be able to stand up and speak their minds in public, um, but will put their name to it. Um, so we could set up something on our website, on our, our website that they can, um, some type of social media. Well, that's what we said, a comment, some input, as long as they sign their name, that's cool. Right. Yeah. That's all, we can do. that's all we can do, we can't, I mean, right, we but probably we could to, do it. We need to publicize, we need to make it a little bit more, you know, publicly, yeah. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll put that, up, we'll table that item until we have a discussion with the selectmen. Because I'm sure as a committee don't want to engage the public without their guidance. Because nope. they are essentially the elected public. Actually, actually they've given that responsibility to us, but we probably should have a discussion with them. But they. I would, look, I would love their guidance. Like you said, we all serve at their pleasure. We don't want to create a problem for ourselves, and we sure don't want to create a problem for them <laughs> or the town manager. <coughs> in terms of town manager. So, um, so any other discussions about that? I think the other thing that, that I would bring up, so we've talked a lot about public input. Is there any particular topic items? I know that from, from, from my perspective in, in doing research to bring forward some some examples of things for us to look at and to look at for best practices is two themes come out of most of those. The first one's always money, financial. Almost every community is after some kind of financial accountability, oversight, transparency goal. Um, the second item goes to the efficiency and effectiveness of the, of the government operation. It's pretty much, and, and the people aspect of it, that's pretty much where both all of those case studies will, will center around. You can go right to the analysis section and dig into that and we'll see. But, um, Dan, isn't the compensation already dealt with in the current act? Yes. Doesn't it, doesn't it say that the person can only be paid what's appropriated? No, I'm not talking about compensation at all. I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about our committee function or Finance focus. Finances in the town. Finances right. in the town. Finances in the town, right. Because I know one of the things that's been brought up many times to a few citizens that like I heard you on this committee, and you're the chair, one well, of the first things that pops up, people, my tax rates go through. And we should have that discussion Correct. then because the tax rate, the tax rate is set at the town meeting. Nobody in this town can spend any money unless it's voted on at the annual town meeting by the governing body. And the what, board. what needs to be clear, which maybe isn't, is that the town manager has no authority, right. no control over the tax rate. Bingo. None. None. So well, in layman's term, the position can't create uh, a debt that isn't authorized by the citizens. Right. 
So, Correct. so, so to your I, point, I, 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 I want to go back to layman's terms in general. Let's talk in the whole because. So in, in, in our form of government, if you attend town meeting, you have the ability to disagree with every single line item in the budget. So everyone. It's everyone. an interesting point you bring up there because I think there was a, a heated discussion about a line this year. There was. Yeah. Right. And the question got should be. Yeah. 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 That's the point. Well, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. That's why that's why they, it's the purest form of town government is a town meeting. And so the town manager has no control over, over that. that. Correct. They, they have a lot of influence over what goes in. Right. They have a lot of influence over how this town's run on a day-to-day -day basis. So for this committee to even imply that the town manager doesn't have an influence right. over the tax right. rate is really probably, I, I'm not going to go there as an individual in my own personal opinion. I think the town manager has a huge influence because they're going to help set a direction. Our board of selectmen are a policy body, to your point. Open town meeting, every town resident that has eligible to vote is a legislative body. We're like Congress. You can't spend a nickel unless we say yes right. at town meeting. But I think, I don't think a lot of people understand it, to your point. That, that, right. So, that, I mean, that's if, you not don't, if you don't understand that, how can you be, how can you make um, knowledgeable well, comments? about the town manager if you don't understand our form of government. Is there, is so, so I'll bring up a good example. There's one last example of a, of a form of government and the framework structure. We have been operating with a town manager board of selectmen office. It's very tightly combined. Actually, when you communicate to the board of selectmen, you're communicating to the board of selectmen through the town manager and often in the official channel. You can't, there's no official channel to go directly to any one of your elected leaders. Everything currently goes to the BOS, which goes to the town manager's office, mm -hmm. to the three selectmen. So essentially, you're communicating the manager. So for example, if you had a difficulty with the manager, you just communicated right through the manager, right to the board. But you, chair, come, just, you, you, come, you come to the board of selectmen's meeting if you want to communicate directly no, no, to I the board of selectmen. And these are also elected officials that are available at their homes. People who come to my home call me by phone if they had a problem. So I understand what you're saying. Yes. Theoretically, there's someone filtering what they get, but if somebody's really motivated, <laughs> they can have a personal audience. Everybody who's been a selectman knows that it's not I, just yeah. going no, through the town manager or the administrative assistant. The phone rings <laughs> at all times of the day or night for a complaint department. Um, but uh, uh, how many? So, so there's some stuff. So there's some stuff, and I don't want to go to the net because we're getting into another rabbit hole. But that's an example of something that when we go read the town manager act and the duties, there's, there's, there's some interesting dynamics going on there. There's a couple channels of the way things happen. So I think that's, that'll be an example. But so, so to my point, I think it is an, this commission is an opportunity to promote what's going on in town government. And hey, we're, we're, we're looking at the act. And I personally think you know, it would be nice to get to more people well, a little more a, enthusiastic about it. This is a strong town manager format, right? So that must mean that the town manager has strength and power. So I understand what you're saying about the town meeting, but the town manager does have a significant role that's all, in the town. Yes. Well, that's true, but not a, not a financial role. The town manager is responsible for the budget. The town manager, according to the act, does not make the budget. They're, the town manager is responsible for making sure that we have a budget. Each department head does their budget. The town manager negotiates. Puts it together. Puts it together. Right. It goes to the FinCom. The FinCom has to review it and approve it. And so does the select. No, no. agree that the town manager has a significant amount of influence in the town. Well, Very that's different than influencing the budget. The budget. We're talking this, about the budget. This, I'm not talking the about town just the town manager. I'm talking about the budget and influence. I understand the budget side, and I'm just saying that. The town manager does have a lot of influence in the town. It's a strong town manager. Does the fin count, let me ask this question. Does, does the, the, does the, the fin, fin count count approve the budget or are they a recommending authority? They recommend. Correct. They only recommend. Right, right. They Give don't approve. Mr. Speaker. They only, they, they only make a recommendation on the requested right. numbers. So the Board of Selectmen construct the warrant. The warrant is the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen. 
it doesn't go on the warrant unless they say so or there's a petition. That's that they construct the order in which it's set, then they construct what goes on it and what doesn't go on. And part of the state law, as part of the regulation is, is that the budget comes at a certain point in that warrant. That and that's submitted to the governing body to vote on. There are only two things that can go outside the budget and go into uh, uh, excess spending, and that's uh, snow. snow removal, and if there's a Board of Health issue that's an emergency, then they can go into public health, emergency. public health and emergency. So those are the only two things. So those, all those constructs are done by the, by the department heads. They submit it to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen say, yes, that's good, no, that's bad. Yeah. The town manager's responsibility is to sit with those department heads and say, okay, do you really need that or do you not need that? And then we put it together for the Board of Selectmen. But the ultimate responsibility for submitting the budget is the Board of Selectmen. They own it. That's not what this says. What does it say? Is this mic? Is this not being written here? No. Oh. What does it say? The manager shall present a request to balance budget to the Finance Committee. That's, that's exactly, but it can't be, that's the law. It has to be balanced. That's the law. But she basically, or she or he no has she. The position. The position. She, the position. Has she, she or he. Well, well, we're not talking about a prior position. person. Right. Right. The position has, co collects from the, but, but uh, prepare and present annually to the board for its review, approval and recommendations to the finance committee, detailed budgetary ed estimates of amounts necessary for the administration. For their review. For their, re right, to the, to the finance. To so the Board of Selectmen for their he or she puts it together. To the Board of Selectmen for their review and then submits to the FinCom. And the Board of Selectmen can change it. They can change whatever they want. They can change whatever it's their budget. I so I think I understand how it works. I'm just telling you that in my opinion the town manager has influence. That's all I'm saying. So do the department heads. The rest of it. So do the department heads. But 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 that position has more influence than a specific department. Once it leaves the department heads, it goes to the town manager. And the town and manager the submits it to the board of select. Let's take a pause for a second. I think we've talked a bit about the budget. Yeah. I think everybody here. Well, I just want to say the town manager has no more influence over the entity that appoints it than any other manager. If I was a selectman and it was a law enforcement issue, I'd be listening to my appointed chief. If it was a fire issue, I'd be listen, listening to the fire chief. If it's a fiscal or management issue in the town, I'm listening to the manager that I appointed. So mm -hmm. maybe we're saying the same thing, but I don't I think know. We probably are, really. So I think, we're saying, this, I think we're saying the same thing. The reason I brought this up as a discussion point, because like I said, it's going to come down to those two key things are going to be really the driver. And, and I just want to say, before we had a fire chief, and we went through and we changed the management of that department as a selectman, we then listened to the three board of engineers when and we would ask them to come before us correct. and report their concerns. Yeah, correct. right. The board, when we had a board of engineers, it was like the board of health. No, no it wasn't. Board of health close. is a separately elected entity. So, so my, my, my point is it operated with the board of health and they had that independence. But, like I said, the three of us were part of that committee, and I think it was a great change to this community. Absolutely, it was the right thing to do. Not quite the same. Board Health gets its authority through the state of Massachusetts, not through the town. No, I understand that. Okay. But at the end of the day, is there is there a way we could look at like the could we could we get like a little timeline from Kelly from like you know things things have changed. The town clerk used to be elected, now it's appointed. There's other boards that were appointed, elected, things have changed, tax are going up, we have a town manager. Can we get like 85 to 2005, where at 20, 2005, we, we kind of went stagnant with the, with the growth. In the explosive years, can, can we just look at the town trend and see at the spike of the town manager, you know, in terms of board, people getting appointed, think, appointed, elected, things that have changed in the government during that period? That, that might, you know, looking back, maybe things were, back here, was, it was like this. We added this, we deleted that. Maybe that'll help us formulate changes to the act if we sort of look at history. So Since like the town, like a timeline, like what with, with, with the in, influx of the manager, we've had some stagnant growth. The, the original act in 20, 2007 said that they were hoping that we would go up to 
12,000 citizens, the growth trajectory. We're, we're not near that at all. And the town hasn't grown much in the last seven or eight years, last 10 years, really. So there, what, you know, so maybe that well, in that growth, what, what, is, what has changed, you know? Um, is, what what does a, that maybe, have to do with the town manager? Well, actually? if we get a little, if we get a time, maybe we can look at, looking at a timeline, maybe with the influx of the town manager and the, the strength of the act, perhaps things can change within the act that could then alter some of these influencers we're talking about or um, for, for, for things like the tax rate or, or, or to, to change. What so, I hear you saying yeah. is you're, you're commenting on the current position that maybe respectfully you weren't in favor of certain things. The reality is we have a town manager because the selectmen at the time right. who pro offered this to the community, with all due respect to those people at that time, didn't want to be responsible for managing this town right. day to day right. like selectmen like myself and before me and after me. That's the reality of it. Yeah. So again, I mean, I have an open mind. I mean, listen to what everybody says. So I think, I think my point is, and I want to take it to two bigger themes and I want to see if the committee is on the same page. Is I know that for me personally, uh, I'll state my own personal opinion. When I would like to see this town have a little more of a, a long-term financial plan. We don't, we don't seem to have that. If it is, it's not readily found, available, or sought after. So I think from a finance standpoint, again, you look at some of the best practices communities, they redefined some of the boards and committees' roles when they made their change. Their capital. Their uh, we have a capital position committee that you could then get on and have input into that that has a 10 year or longer fiscal plan for the town. I mean, like you said, at this point, I just want us to, to look at that whole role at the end. Of the, at how the does day. that relate to the town manager act? Because right. the town manager act has to do with the day to day authority. And to your point, and we've brought it up over and over again, the town manager, in the way our community adopted it, is an extremely strong role and position. I'll be honest with you, I would suspect that the town manager, whoever it is, past, for future, has a lot of influence. Again, we talk about this influence. Yeah, for future then, it's the selectmen, because that's what the selectmen do now. They don't run the day-to-day -day operation. They supposedly think more globally into the future and deal with those issues. So it's who you elect every year then as a selectman. That's how you have been put into that. I, I personally, I would agree. That's how I, that's, that's my only way as a voter to decide I want something different. But when I put my tax bill, or I'm paying my taxes as part of my mortgage every month, I don't want to wait till next year's election to make sure I have an efficiently functioning government. But that's how our government works. works. You, you, no, I understand. If you don't like how but, it's but, working, but what I, here's, here's you have what the I'm opportunity to change it at an election. Time. And we're, we're at this. No, that, that, that I can only change the person. I can't change how the government is working by any stretch. I can only change a person that, again, is one more person that has an influence on in how it's operating. I don't have the ability to change change them. I know that I personally attended the MRI presentation back in February, and it was ex excellent because MRI answered some really good, insightful questions. I know I asked a bunch of questions. They said, you have an extremely town strong town manager in the way you're so structured in your act. So that was, it was interesting to get that opinion from somebody that's not from Upton. You know, right. independent. They, they said that, you know, and we've been dealing with them on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. They said, our town manager act is no different than the town manager act in several other towns. It's not stronger, it's not weaker, it's the same. When, right. when the law was written, it was cut and pasted from some other town. It wasn't invented from scratch. It's not original thought. It's not original thought. <laughs> okay. So you're, it's you're, the same. I didn't, I, I wouldn't. And, and I, 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 the basic framework is the same. I think you would agree. I think when you start digging into some of the other communities that are in, in these pieces, you'll the, see. So the other communities do other things because other communities are different. Um, you know, we're we're different than Mendon. So is that? Is that I guess I asked the question: Is up in the cut and paste community? Is that what? We go through? <laughs> what it sounds that's like, what, really. That's what is we that did. That's what was done. You want one person that will be responsive 
to everybody in the community that they'll have an opportunity to speak to them, and then that person will make a decision, supposedly based on the input of everybody. Maybe we should go to a mayor where one person makes the decision and is responsible for it. Otherwise, you have three people that really don't govern the day-to-day -day operation, and the citizens voted to take that away from them and give them the authority to hire somebody who does that. Correct. I, I, you know, I, I think we're digressing. I don't think there's anybody at this table that doesn't believe in a town manager, but I think we're talking in great discussion about the dynamics of how that person functions in our town government. We, we put it in place in a, by cutting and pasting somebody's stuff from a previous community, which is what most communities do. Right. But the level of thought of putting it together as it functions within the whole committee, community, which is what I've learned in the last six months in researching this, is that but you're, you're thinking about the whole system. You're addressing a different problem. This committee, in my, as, as far as I understand, is not supposed to be looking at how the town manager interacts with the rest of our town government. That's a different We're looking problem. at everything in the Town Manager Act that has authority. So to be honest with you, with the strong town manager approach in our act, the town manager is touching almost everything in our community. In fact, the MRI, Bob, Bob Merrill is his last name uh, from MRI? Mercy. Bob Mercy, thank you. I apologize, I couldn't remember his last name. He, he really gave an interesting perspective to me. I'm not sure if it was during the meeting or if I talked to him after. But he said, the way your town manager act is written, you essentially are expecting your person to be an incredible generalist. Like they have to be good at a lot mm -hmm. of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So and is, I, is that I, I would say that I do, I personally think that may not be the right thing for the community. But that's a different pro issue. <laughs> That may be something that yeah. we put on, the, that may be something, as we look at the act, that may come up and they, we would have done No, it. maybe it's the appointing authority that hired whoever they want to hire, to, maybe they're not finding the right candidate, but that doesn't mean that that position shouldn't have the control that it currently has, or the responsibility is for that control. You can't hamstring a manager that's supposed to run a town. Yeah. And I think that this document is not set in stone. It's a living, breathing document. It's whoever is hired next in three or four years, I'm sure somebody's going to take issue with the document that we create and it is going to need adjustments because of the lack of a charter or bylaws or the board of selectmen, whatever the case may be. So to think that what we're writing is the end all be all and is going to solve all the issues is it just isn't going to happen. I just think we need to look at what we have try and make it better mm -hmm. and address some of the issues that if we possible know, if, if, if possible, possible. right if, if if it makes sense to make these adjustments to maybe better guide the next town manager to the way we as a town want our town manager to act absolutely i mean I, <clears throat> with all due respect i think we've gone in 13 different directions yeah. rather than focusing on so I want to back yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, was it five or six pages of, of an actual manager? Right. I don't think anywhere in there it talks about setting the tax rate in the job okay. description, so I don't think that's on the table. I do think that the next step, after all this discussion, is we need to have some intelligent input, first from the selectmen and then from the direct reports. I think, you know, everything else we talk about is kind of throwing stuff into a basket seeing what we can pick at. I think we really need to set our direction by sitting down with the selectmen and saying, okay, what do you think? Recommendation on how we interface with the department heads and we the, we should come up with questions. I'd agree, but I'd also uh, suggest that we accept or include what Scott said as far as past selectmen who may not currently be serving. I, I, yeah, I agree. I, I would agree that. Yep. We, well, we can in, in, Invite them. We they want to, don't want to talk, then they don't want to talk. Yeah. But I think we should give at least the opportunity I agree. to be heard. Yes, I agree. As we do everybody else. Yes. So basically, we've been talking about essentially this third goal about professional representation of public interest and best practices. So, with that point, like I said, the discussion with the three board of selectmen first. first will guide that. But I think we've brought up some points that I think we need to have 
uh, be ready to discuss with the selectmen about some of these things we've been talking about, about citizen engagement, citizen. I think some of those things need to be brought forward as part of that dialogue with, with the selectmen. Well, we're asking for input from the selectmen. The purpose of the discussion is the process in inviting how we go about inviting park heads. Is that the purpose of it, their invite? Well, we talked about essentially engaging the three different stakeholders. Right. We said Get input from our, them. our point was, was to talk them. to them about the direction and the rest of it. Well, do we, we, don't, do we really have to ask their permission to? No, we asked their suggestion on how we go We're about asking doing for it. Input. How to go about doing it. Oh, okay. Because we serve at their pleasure, we don't want to create. And we have a mission statement. We have a mission statement we need to get dialed in. Correct, tonight. which is why I had this discussion, because I want to get to the point to make sure that we have those items addressed in the mission statement, or we just leave it if we feel like we have enough in the mission statement. To I think we have So let's go to the next item. Anybody have any questions on item number two? I think we've covered that. Beat it to death. Bye. Excuse me. Yeah, that's yours. Thank you. Don't take up my space, please. <laughs> okay, now I gotta find it. I have it. Where is it? It's here someplace. I know it's here. It's separate. No, it's separate. I know it's here. I know I'll find it. No. L. Oh. Look, I found it. I gotta turn the paper. Right. So, I guess my only comment on the mission statement that's proposed at this point in paragraph A is where it includes in citizen engagement. Mr. Chairman, I don't think that that should be included. I think that it is by reference, perhaps, regarding reviewing the effectiveness and efficiency of the Town Manager Act. So I, I'd suggest that we delete and citizen engagement. That doesn't mean that citizens won't have a chance to offer opinion, but for the reasons that I've previously stated and others on this um, committee. Is citizen engagement Well, I think if Liz could re reword that point, you would draw that I one for the section. Yeah, original time. That's the one of the pieces where it actually talks about direct citizen involvement. You read it earlier. I did. Uh, yeah, we need to respond to it. We're going to have to read it. We're going to have to read it. We're going to have to read it. we Right in the town manager act, so I don't think we can take the citizen engagement out of there. Any other? It's in the job description. It's in the act. Yeah, in the act. In the act. And again, the citizens will still have the opportunity every okay. meeting to come here and speak or to communicate with us yeah, personally. So I think it's the engagement between the town manager and the citizens. That's what that right. phrase means. Yeah. Not, not the not committee. This, but correct. But I think to the point of having this in that first section, I think we're, we're capturing that piece. How we decide to, to engage some feedback when we've talked about a few of the things we've talked about, I, I, would, I would propose we'd leave it in. I feel otherwise, but. Okay. I don't see why. Pardon? I don't see why. Well, you're going to make a motion? I'll make a motion to delete in the mission statement, paragraph A, the wording in citizen engagement. I'll second the motion. That way we can have a discussion about it. We have a motion to delete that and second it. So I'll open the floor up for committee discussion about that. And we'll start and I'll make sure we go around the, go around the table on this one. Um, you know, my only discussion, I don't see the harm in it. I, don't, um, I could go either way with it. It doesn't matter to me personally. Um, but I don't see the harm of moving in as part of the uh, part of the actual. Yeah. I don't see the harm. I'm sorry, I already spoke my my piece. I think it needs to be there. Um, in my opinion, there are lots of things in the Town Managers Act that we're going to be looking at. I don't understand why we're picking on just one of them. 
So, you know, um, it shows an agenda. Right. So I think uh, I would agree. I think unless we're going to list all of the things in the Town Manager Act, then I would say we don't really need to have this here. How do we, as a committee, make sure we have that part? You're just saying it's in the act, so we're going to be forced to address it, whether it's in our mission statement or not. Right. right. Everything right. Is, that's in the act is part of our, our mission, mission statement by default. Okay. So why do we have to point out specific. that specific thing? It's a global, the, the mission should be a global mission statement that says what we're going to do. And this goes to a specific item in that, in that description okay. so it, it doesn't so you skipped I'm, over you yeah I'm, i i you i think it's out. i think it's a, a superfluous piece of information okay uh, down to the superfluous. I, mean, I, I think we're, we're talking about not the citizens and the committee you understand that we're talking about the citizens that they're part of the job description is citizen engagement of the, of the town manager act there are many aspects right. as steve said, said that are right. in the description that are why the is that there and that's already respectfully right. covered mm -hmm. when you're talking about the effectiveness and efficiency of the town manager act bingo you don't need to say citizen engagement then again it's, it's okay it's already covered. inclusive yeah. okay then sure okay how about that? I'm, I'm I promise you, I'll advocate for yes, you I, anybody I, I, that <laughs> wants to talk about that, but it shouldn't be it part shouldn't of the be mission specific. statement. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's inclusive. Okay. So now we can take a vote. There you go. Liz, do you have any questions? Comment? Before we take a vote? Um, no, it's so fine. And, 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 yeah. Okay, so we have um, a motion to delete ANSYS and engagement from that. So all in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yes, that's me. One opposed and all the rest for us. So show a majority vote of the board. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Well, the process went quite well. Excuse me. Okay, right. give me a second to say something. Well, you gotta be a quick boy. <laughs> well, I can speed up. I'm from New York, you know. <laughs> I'm from Indiana, just a poor old Indiana so pig farmer. Cool. Okay. Um, next item, so that's item number A, so we're going to take citizen engagement out. But hopefully the citizens hear us that we're realize this is going to be something we'll be addressing. The committee's focus and charge is uh, B in the, in the uh, mission statement. Oh, I, oh. All right. I, would like, I would like to take the A, B, and C off and just make it all one paragraph. Because it flows as a paragraph, A, B, and C. The A, B, and C was when we had the original piece of it. Right. I mean, the A, B, and oh, C just make, make that, just make it a paragraph. One statement. One statement. One yeah. paragraph. That makes it yeah. easy. Well, you probably feel that way because maybe if you have separate paragraphs numbered, it shows an order of importance, and yeah. the entirety is important equally, not right. A, B, C, or one, two, three. Well, might be a just right. put it on the one. Yeah. Okay. I, whatever makes you float your boat, my friend. <laughs> So is that a motion? Make a motion? I'll make a motion and we take the A, B, and C off and make it one, one paragraph. I'll second that motion. So we have a, another motion on the table to essentially just make it a paragraph versus an A, B, and C. Any discussion about that? So we make a motion to remove the letters. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nothing. It carries an A. Very good. Good thing you have good sense. Any other questions about commissions? <laughs> no, I think we're no. all set. Because we could easily have stuff. Uh, put I have out a, one, one quick question. I'm yep. just, is there a way that we could use the petition or the, the second petition where specific items were written or rewritten as a guide or as a starting point or somehow in our mission statement as opposed to? Put it in your packet, and now we're not going to look at it anymore. So, can we can we use this somehow in our discussions, or is it just fodder for all of us? Isn't the purpose is of the petition to review the effectiveness and efficiency of the Manager Act? That's really what this petition is looking to do, right? Right. So that's already in the first sentence of what will be the formal mission statement. So anything we're you any and we're using everything Any resource. in the packet. Okay. All 
Any other questions on the mission statement paragraph? Move this. Move to accept the mission statement as amended. Second. I have a motion and seconded to um, move the revised paragraph. Any dis further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nothing. The unanimous carries. Okay. Mess it up, so as we go point by point, we're going to get back to some of the discussions we had. It was good to see. Well, we already talked about number five, haven't we? Um, review and discussion of 2007-2008 Upland Town Manager Reassessment Committee report. Uh, it's just on the agenda. The next, just for the purposes of my thinking of putting together the agenda, um, four through um, five are really just to go through of what we have in front of us and why we have it. Uh, and I expect this as a committee to take any action. I just want to know any thoughts or, or concerns or questions or other things that people on the committee feel that we need to, to look at or include. I'd like to thank the chair for gathering that information. I actually would like to thank Deb Cato for gathering oh. that information. <laughs> thank, <laughs> Deb, thank you. And from what I understand in talking to Kelly McElroy and Deb, that wasn't an easy task. No, I know. <laughs> there's, there's like 160 pages in one and a, a hundred in another one. Uh, well, she was the one specifically going after all the stuff from the 2000, 2007, 2008 Town Manager Review Committee, Assessment Committee, and Good. we have it all, right? We have yep. all the meeting minutes, all the exhibits. Great. And I know we had a copy of just the, the report without the exhibits. So kudos to uh, Devin and Kelly for, and other I'm sure yeah. it was probably involved in pulling all that together. So that'll be helpful. And I think, Alan, that was something that you really specifically yep. asked for in the first meeting. So that's a good thing. Any other discussions or concerns about that? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to agenda item number five. So um, agenda number five, item five, I have included um, essentially some resource materials that come from the best practices approach. So this goes back to our discussion we are having earlier. Um, these are all things that are coming through MMA or some kind of organization related to MMA um, with regarding to a model community, Groton. They did their change the same time Upton was doing our change. So that's why that's included. It's MMA, MMA kind of promotes this as a best practices blue ribbon study, case study. So I think uh, as we get into some of the discussions we were having earlier, I think that I would really advise the committee to, to look at that closely and understand it. Um, the second one was the Triple MA Form of Government Report. That's a uh, report done by a professor and uh, some students at uh, Clark University. And essentially, it's a nine community, um, again, case study report that talks about best practices and change in government. So I think, again, it's another really useful piece of information for the committee to understand about. Um, you know, what to look at, why people are changing, why people consider changes, what has worked and what has not worked. Yes? Look, I got a question. I could just see it. Um, I want to wait till somebody makes a comment. Okay. And then the, uh, the last two items are the town of West Newbury currently is one of the communities going in front of the uh, legislature right now, 2017, as we speak, to put forward a town manager change from this, the, the format we had to now. So you're looking at a community that's doing exactly what we did in 2008. So that, again, just a reference, piece of reference, reference information. Um, interesting enough, there's a lot of common themes with um, our manager act and that, but there's definitely some differences that will be, I think, some good discussion points. And then the last piece was two local government factions, which talks about what we were talking earlier, um, how our town government structure, who's the chief municipal officer, who's the policy body, and who's the legislative body. So it just kind of talks into the summary of all the communities in Massachusetts. And then the last sheet that goes with that fact, fact sheet is there's a two-pager that talks about how 
week to go about recommending any change. And it talks about essentially following town government structure using the general laws and bylaws, or doing a special acts approach like we have. So we've gotten two out of the three things covered. And it also covers the charter process. Um, is our mandate to, to do that? Or, Al, can you just move back a little bit? Or is our mandate just to talk about the act? It sounds like you're presenting it to the, uh, to the electorate for them to vote on it. No. Is that beyond what our mandate is? No, I think this speaks to the point of my concern when we talked about earlier when I brought it up in front is it goes back to this, that one particular item that was in the original sure. petition that talked about best practices and effectiveness and efficiency. And I think this is for a way for our committee to look at what other communities are doing as it relates to the act, because I think if we just decide to close the walls of just inside Upton and what the nine of us think without looking out to other things, I think so that- I don't know who created those resources that you're talking about, and I don't know if whoever created them had agendas. So that would be my only concern. I don't mind looking at any material that anybody in the committee wants to provide to us, but when you put it here, it kind of gives the inference that this is going to have some authority. Uh, so again, I'm not quite sure that you need to identify number five, what theoretically we're going to review in order to formulate our opinion. Or is it educational material? I was going to say, is it just on here so, yeah. So you looking through your packet, here's this stuff you can look at. Just reading identify oh, reference. Right. Right. reference material so you don't have to just there's already some starting point, then you can continue to do your right. own. Right. For example, if I give consideration to something other than that, maybe I'm not supposed to do that because it wasn't listed here as a resource. Um, no, you get, that's my point to, to the committee as a whole is this is a starting point. These are reference materials. Yeah. These came from the MMA. Right, Dan, then just provide the reference materials. I don't know that, you know, okay. we can give whatever consequence we want in, in reading it or reviewing it. Correct. It's reading uh, material. If you have other things that the com committee thinks is relevant and valid, I think that I would ask that everybody on the committee bring those things forward. And you make that note in the minutes that this is just reference material. sample reference material and nothing more. That makes sense, Alan? So the original petition, the best practices, and the effectiveness efficiency that's that's all that all that i could find and i will give you the website that, pe that petition because you keep using that word best practices. i don't know who created that petition yes. i did not create that petition so and you know the, the we, other we, thing we just the, because of that petition. The, the other thing too to be uh, best practices are only best if they work for you Okay. So what may be best in West Tisbury or Groton may not, may not work in Upton. Best practice is totally relative agree. to the, totally agree. the place. That's so, why well, it's a sample so, reference material. It, again, it's just samples. You're right. It could be, doesn't work for us at all. Maybe the, maybe, the, maybe the way we're referring to it as best practices is probably not a good description of what the information is. Right. Maybe it should be just information. information. Right. If it keeps so, so I'm, I'll back up and be a devil's advocate. I learned that well from one of the committee members. Is if we didn't have that, if I gave everybody homework to go and pull up their five things to bring forward to the committee, we can do that also. To the, to the no, my I think Steve's point and Alan's point is two two issues. First of all, it's reference material, which you, you okay. And when you refer to best practices, let's don't call it best practices. Let's just call it reference material or information. Resources. Resources. Because right. you're making a value judgment. It, right. On, That's exactly. On what's here. Good. Yeah. That it has as best practices. And when you, it. It's if, just reference material. Yeah. When you say it best practices. Best practices or it may not. It might not. So, because Dan, you might That's look at all. this and you might think that these are uh, best practices or whatever that phrase is that you used a couple of times, but I might look at it and not give the same consequence to it. You might like chocolate. I might like vanilla. So, you know, when you say best practices, it infers that you you're saying this is the best we can. This is the thing with standard we should look at. And if we're going to be open, we just say it's reference. I, I would agree completely with you that it has to do more with 
other ideas and other ways of communities doing that. So I was not involved at all in the first petition and the authoring of it. I did sign it, and I will tell you that it, that's a buzzword that you find in the industry, best practices, lesson learned. I'm an architectural engineer, and we do that all the time with clients in our internal groups and committees. So I'm not trying to imply any kind of infer, inference from that standpoint. But the, from, from my perspective, I went to the MMA website to, in preparation for being on this committee and doing my homework. And Got some information. On a personal note, yes. uh, this is what I do for a profession. So I don't accept what anybody tells me. This is not personal with no, you I'm making sure. suggestions. Having lived next to Alan for 30 years, I can so. appreciate Well, it, and, and I come from a different profession where there are best practices and quality assurance and quality control. And there are best practices. You know what's good about that? That's why you're in the committee, but that's why I'm on the committee. So yes. Every, everybody in this community somehow has a voice. Yes. Right. That's very so, good. I appreciate that. That's what you brought up with both of them. Yeah. So you said that's that's our job to bring that forward. So, so, so we're no longer I we're no longer referred to it as best practice. <laughs> we'll just call it reference material. You know what? I <laughs> <laughs> don't reference material. There you go. We're so sorry. anyways, what well, well, I learned from Alan is I could call it best practices because that's my own personal opinion. But as a committee member, it's reference material. Right. There you go. <laughs> okay, we're cooking now, but we're cooking. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? Any other things that we need to think about as a group for that, for number five? Please, I recommend anybody to bring stuff forward. What was the um, document and which town was the, the blue ribbon? Window? Groton is the blue ribbon one that the MMA makes reference to, the okay. blue ribbon case study. That's the MMA's reference. That is the ribbon. opinion the of the MMA's Mass Municipal opinion, Association. Um, right. Who the hell is the MMA? Right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're at number six, which is future meeting dates. The first of June is our next one. Yep. Any questions? First of June. June. How many people have to attend to have a meeting? Five? Because there's nine of them? Five. Yep. But then we five. Um, the other item that we need to talk about is coordinating that date with the selectmen because we want to talk to them as a committee. Um, I would ask this entire committee for some input on some ideas on how we will go about structuring the agenda in that discussion. So all I ask is the committee as a group put their questions out and that correct me if I'm wrong as long as we share it amongst everybody in the community. It's just ideas. It's not any decision making. I want to get some, some thoughts on how we would structure that. I just go back to future meeting dates. I'd ask that uh, our secretary remind us by email and such. Uh, I'm very old school and just write into a calendar and uh, don't know how to use those new fickle things. <laughs> so, I can offer you a training course, Alan. <laughs> yeah, but you charge yes. me. So. <laughs> no, I, for you, I do it I'm for sure free. If that doesn't have any problem, should give us a, a reminder. I think what we need to do is. We also need to generate a formal letter or request to the Board of Selectmen asking them to attend our next meeting. That would be over the signature of the chairman. I, and I'd make a motion to allow the chairman to draft the letter, and I feel comfortable with Senate. what his content yep. of that letter would be. Yep. That would reflect the discussions here tonight. Well, we just, yeah, right. He wanted to be chairman. I will take on that task. Can't be more than a paragraph. But I'm going to actually, and I'm allowed to do this since you guys are giving me the authority, I will share it to the group as a whole before I send that. Okay. Via email to everybody, and I will welcome them. Are we, are we, we not to put too much on the next agenda? Yes. Uh, I we think limit yeah. our agenda to the Board of Selectmen and give selectmen. them, yeah. Because that may be a long or or maybe short. discussion, public discussion afterwards. Yeah. As always. And so we we'll have five items, just from a standpoint, because we'll always have review and approval meeting minutes, yep. and then we'll always have six, seven, and eight. Okay. Yeah, so there'll be one in the middle. The so we will, we will have five items on the agenda, and those will be the five. Well, the, the one you should always add at the end is audience participation. Right. That should yes. be number after six, before seven. What did you, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Audience Public input. Yes. That's Which is a good segue to what we should do right now before we move forward. Well, so, first, let's finish the discussion on this. On the letter request. request. So at, 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 
are we going to also invite at the same time the former selectmen, or is that yes. separate? Oh, I think we sh I think we should invite I'd like them. To, I'd like to encompass that in one meeting. Yeah, yeah. Former selectmen, which would be uh, Ken Picard and Jim, Jim Brooks. 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 Right. Okay. I think that's a great. Uh, are you comfortable asking the current selectmen to offer invitation, or do you want to send a separate correspondence to each one? Uh, I would actually ask you two gentlemen. I would, are, are really the, 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 the etiquette people that I would, I would suggest it. Perfectly fine. I would suggest that you send a, a request. Al Holman is the etiquette person. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. I would suggest that you send. I'm looking at you, Al. Actually, <laughs> trust me. Um, I would suggest that you send a, a, a request to the Board of Selectmen as a board, Board of Selectmen, and then send a letter to each of the other selectmen, a personalized letter to them. And who would not be Jim, Jim Brochu, Brochu and Ken, Ken Picard. Picard. Anybody on the committee have any concerns or questions about that? I'm sorry. Are we picking future meeting dates besides the first? Are we picking the next one out after yeah. that? Or are we not until? Well, Dick's not here. Could we? Uh, is there some reason that we need to do it? Or? So what I can do is I'm going to send an email out, and before I'll send it out by the end of the weekend, and I'll put a bunch of dates out there. Okay. So and we'll know. do it that way, and we're allowed okay. to do that all we want. Yeah, you can schedule that. a meeting via email. Okay, That's great. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing there. So what I'll do is we'll do that if anybody sees any problem with that. Great. Do we have a majority for the next meeting? Because mm -hmm. I'd really be embarrassing if. Well, I'll be here. <laughs> if we didn't have a quorum and we had the board of selectmen here? Well, if, I can't if Alan's coming, then I won't be so here. So the first? Five is, is the number. So June 1st. I'll be here. I'll, I'll be, be here. here. Yeah, I'm here. So we have a quorum so or quarrel, okay. whichever the case may be. <laughs> so, and then I will send out a separate email on Thank you. dates going forward through the rest. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to open up to see if there's any questions from the public. Yes. Mike Mashi, I'm 20. Uh, yeah, Mike just come up, sit down. Come sit down. Uh, right. Just two, two things. Um, I'd like to ask the commission committee, wherever it is, um, to ask from the Board of Selectmen the information that was received from MRI. Um, when they had citizens come in and, have, and give input on um, the mold that they are going to use to mold the next town manager. I think that's public information. And I think it's uh, pertinent information. It would be good reading material for the, this committee. It gives a sense of, um, it would give you some, some type of a sense. I know there's a lot of people that came in. They got a lot of different stuff that they spoke about. And that information, um, I haven't seen surface at all. I'm not, I'm not sure if that information was shared with the selectmen other than in summary. Um, and um, I'm not sure that MRI would be willing to release that information because and they why may, they, I, I'm not I'm asking the wrong group here, but then why did they have citizens come in and, and speak and give their name and their information? Why, it, why is that? Because the, uh, MRI used that information to help them whittle down the list of potential candidates that applied for the job to those that seemed to match some of the feedback that they got from those discussions. That's how the information was used. Can you ask a question, Mr. Chair? They were developing an ideal candidate profile. Right. And that was actually a deliverable of theirs, correct? Yes. Is that, is that actually like a, so we paid for them to develop? It's, it's on, uh, that information is, is on their website. Okay, so that's on look at it. But the actual the actual comments themselves about who said what, I don't believe they would be willing to release that. Yeah. But their final deliverable is but the final deliverable is an ideal candidate profile which they've published on their website, which you can look at. And that's what they're using to help refine their search for potential candidates. And that's a matter of public record. What? The, the deliverable. Yes. What was the form? Can we can we get a copy of that? It was when the MRI so the came out to the public for people to come in to give comment about um, the next future town manager. You know, but you can make that available to us. Yes. Okay. 
people. Came in. In, individual people. They had um, uh, person. groups. I, I could go, but I, I, I did an email to them because that was one of the formats. Yeah, you could email them too. Right? I did an email. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, but no, so no other public officials. So, so I would request, like I said, as the chair, I would request on behalf of the citizen that if you can get get something that is not just on the website, whatever their deliverable was, yeah. other than the website, and if they did publish some kind of summary, like I said, I, you're probably going to want. Like I said, I, I don't think they published anything. I think what they may have done was verbally communicate to the Board of Selectmen okay. what the gist of the public comments were. Maybe and that. again, the purpose of them doing that was to help them create this ideal profile. profile. Now, did they, they deliver those comments at a public meeting? No, this okay. was not a public okay, meeting so of any kind. Okay, so the only thing that we could have as a matter of public record is the deliverable that they committed to. But even that was not done at a public meeting, unless they presented it to the selectmen, which I'm not. Once it went on the web, it becomes public. Yeah. public. But the, the comments that they got oh, were right. not done in a public forum. It so, wasn't a meeting like this. So all, all we can ask so for is those things It's are not part of the public domain. So Steve, I would just ask that, as, you know, as us, my chair, so you're the chair of the other committee. Yeah. If you could get whatever the best right. could be to capture that. I think that would be helpful for this committee, and it sounds like it would be good right. people in the public that would be interested and to see they, it. They do, we retain them, they do work for us, and unless it was disclosed that these comments were not going to be made But, but they, were not, they were not made in a public forum. How about this? How about if we request, last, last yes. time we had this meeting, we made request of the Board of Selectmen to provide us Sandy, certain documentation. Uh, yeah, let's I'm, I'm willing to make that request and see if it's provided to us. And Correct. if the selectmen say it's sure. not in their possession of control, if it was by a contracted entity, they can make the request to them. If they don't want to, good then point. They, they have the contract with them. Good point. Yeah. So we're going to be asking. We're going to request the board of selectmen yeah. to provide uh, any uh, documentation provided. Is the entity MRA? MRI. Okay. Um, One of those tests. Which, uh, which relates to the uh, implementation of the Town Manager Act or retention. So th this was, uh, Deb, th th these were interviews that MRI held uh, with anyone who wanted to come in and. and they were just right. right. Yeah, it was health here. Yeah, there was one, there was one day when uh, Bob Mercer from where I was here. Can I just ask one more question? Why is that important, though, to us reviewing the Town Manager Act? Because I think people had, um, going back to the citizen input, I think it's a way for you to get some type of feel with the citizens that took the time from the days of work to come in to give information of what they think the town manager, you know, what, what, what was good, what was bad. Um, so uh, there was pertinent information that was, I know, was given to several people that I know that myself that had uh, took the time to do that. Were there many, uh, meeting minutes taken of that? He took notes. Yeah. yeah, but those notes may be, it, it was not, not a public meeting, so. so uh, it's, it, uh, the reason why I'm asking is it's any documentation that could be public information that would help you guys to get an idea of what you know, was saying. How that profile came about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you said, I think you, you hit on head. I think through Steve's, we have the, we have the, Pleasure of having the chair of that committee here, so he's involved with that. Oh yeah, I forgot that. Right. Um, uh, but to the point is, is we'll we'll make a request to the selectmen for them to give us essentially the profile information and whatever backup they would like to release to this committee that would be pertinent to us. And since Steve so, is here, he'll know what that is. So the, the um, profile is actually set on the website. So I believe that it's published on the MRI website, but I can double check. So I can, I, we can get that. Yeah. As far as for that. Well, I think we're asking for the deliverable that was related to that. So that is the deliverable. Yeah. How that deliverable came to be right. was through the right. conversations. Right. That were held. So all we need is whatever the deliver. All we can expect is the deliverable from MRI. I don't. I mean, I don't know whatever what, it is. I don't know the details of the contract right. between MRI and the board of selectmen. So we'll let the board. We'll let the board tell us. So, what so they let the board. The board can yeah. say yes. Very we have it, and we can share it or not. Two, two more quick things. One is uh, I myself is, is 
just that participated in um, the use of SurveyMonkey. I think it's an e excellent tool for people to that um, want to give information to um, the board uh, or the, this committee. Um, so if you're looking for, a, um, uh, it's a good way to get citizen involvement if you want to hear anything from the citizens um, regarding the town managers act what they think. Um, uh, it would give, like, give you a, a, a different um, avenue to, to use it. Um, it's pretty simple. I wonder how much that costs. It's not it's a free. It's free. free. It's free. free yeah. But the problem with that is um, free means free. we can't accept you can anonymous free. feedback. You can. I think in Survey Monkey, you have a choice to put your name on it or not put your name on yeah, it. would accept anything that didn't have anybody's name right. on it. So as long as so it's not a it could be adaptable or some type of tool like that. I think you know I'm the last one kicking the street so. like that one that wants to do technology, but it's it's a it's a good tool. It's people don't have a lot of time, but they may want to have input. So well, they can always send email to this committee. So they don't have to use a survey. We don't have to rely on the survey. I think he's just saying, though, to make it easier, maybe have an opportunity for more input. So I don't want to tell you what to do, but it's a good way is if you put out a group of X questions that you would like to have anybody that you could talk to that would have an input on it, and then you would have a What are we going to wait and see if the selectman's office provides us anything yep. and then go from yeah. there? We've already got that. I'll get, I'll get with you, Thank Doug. You. Thank, Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. message. Yep. Somebody else. You know her, don't you? I do know her. Can you just <laughs> find her where? Okay. Nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> no cakes today. I don't. <laughs> um, so I just got a couple of comments. Um, so as being a citizen of 20 years, and I really did appreciate the comment of Do, however, feel as with everybody, to say that, that they are extremely busy and being right in the heart of raising my children to get coverage and to blah 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 to get here is hard. So I do appreciate what Mr. Marsh and the previous speaker said about just making it available out there somewhere, whether it's the Survey Monkey or an email. I think it's an excellent idea because I think that you will get people to respond, um, but. You know, me being, I, like I said, we come in 20 years to these town meetings. I've only recently in the last year had the gum and the, the courage to even stand up at a meeting. It's very intimidating for all of you who are so comfortable up there and have been doing this. It's very intimidating for just a citizen that doesn't understand the process of government all that well to stand up and ask a question and feel, especially I can speak in the last town meeting, and feel kind of like you're bullied or you're like this, blue, blue, blue. like you don't, you don't necessarily feel like you have a voice either. sometimes. I'm just saying that. So I think to give the citizens through media, sort of different ways, it's an excellent idea. That's one, one thing. Um, we appreciate that comment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, I also feel like it's excellent to reach out to all the department heads. I like that thought. Um, again, I feel like you guys are assuming Rightly so, that all the department heads are going to represent the greater good of their entire department and not just their own viewpoint. With that said, I think we need to keep in mind that there might be some people in the department that have differing views. And if you at least, again, have an opportunity for them to be able to voice not directly through their department head only. That, that is we just, feel we have, yeah. not speaking for the chairman, but they can come here, whether they're a citizen or an employee, and still speak here, or they can send communication. The chairman can identify where people should send communication, and maybe an email address, maybe an email should be created for I this think committee. What, I think, I think yes. what we've, we've, done, right. we've done for this committee is we're going to have a discussion with the selectmen about engagement. Yeah. Okay. 
And, and I think we were leaving at that point at this point. No fear of retaliation like that type of stuff. So people feel free to be able to speak. Right. I, I'm just saying that that out there. And um, just respect somebody had said, I think, with the regards to this committee being formed that not a ton of people, you know, signed up for it. I feel like being one of the citizens that put forth the petition, I don't think it was well advertised, and I don't think that it was that much time. I think it was less than four days. So I just <laughs> wanted to say that out loud, that had we given it a couple weeks of people really knowing that it was going to be happening, I think we may have had more. So I just kind of wanted to clear that um, any perception that people have that people maybe didn't want to, because I think that there is a lot of interest out there from the community, um, as was said there. But, I really do appreciate this committee um, that you guys stepping up. I know everybody's lives are incredibly busy, and um, so I appreciate you taking the time to put this over for the citizens. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other items that I didn't anticipate? <laughs> I would recommend, thank you for bringing this up, I would recommend that actually you send them out to the entire committee and that this committee respect that process and give edits back by email to Deb directly. I think that's what I did. Yeah. I'm, I'm, did I do that right? Or I, I think you and I got mixed up somehow. Steve. I, I, sent it I sent it to you and to, and to Dan. Yeah, you're not supposed to send it yeah, to Dan. My, my suggestion is, is that we we make any mod we we get the minutes from you. We make the modifications and we just, we make those modifications at, at the meeting. At the meetings, because what happens? Stick to the meetings. Stick to the meetings, because what happens is it gets really confusing, and then there could be a jillion. Yeah, I would agree. Because we don't like if Kevin and I have the same method, we both send it to you. Then as long as which is this is fine, and if you can just put it right in what you're saying to us, because right, it's fine. Well, yeah, we, well, we would we would make those changes in a, in a very systematic manner and say, okay, each change mm -hmm. would be a modification. Yeah. Once we all agree with the change, then you can make it make the edit to the, the minutes. But I, I, on this particular issue, I think I'm old school. I think it needs to be everybody. I, uh, <clears throat> it's one of those things that you know you want to just do it for efficiency purposes, but uh, given how emails emails old school in this day and age. <laughs> So uh, I would actually say that it probably makes sense for us to just do it on paper in the committee at the moment right now. Because I know that email can easily get simple mistakes. It's, it, nobody's trying to do anything in, in, intentionally. Because I actually reply back and right. offer the same thing. So all three of us knew what we were talking about. And, but like I said, that's not an appropriate way of So all right. let's. Let's speak. Okay. We're going to get disbanded. <laughs> so what Deb did was she put all those emails oh, in, in our packet, so we saw that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dan, you said we're going to email for future dates. No emails. We're just only thing we're going to email is, a group is just dates. For future dates. I will That's send out an email okay. with some okay. future date yeah, ideas. Perfect. I just wanted to remind myself. Okay. 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 Can you just give me the final decision? I'll give you a final oh, decision. And what I'll do is. I'm going to try to get a week ahead of any posted meeting after I get everybody in the committee. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, perfect. We'll go from there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
Yep. I'm sorry. I'm looking for uh, number eight. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I will second that motion. We have a motion to second to adjourn. Any other discussion? No. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye.